Hello and welcome to Teach Me English. This is your host, Raham Asad Aulad Sari. And I have come with another topic that is, uh, I must say, uh, one poem that is Nicholas Nye by Walter de la Mere. Okay. So, in this video, we would discuss in detail about this poem, which is in six stanzas. Okay. As you can see, the picture of a donkey is there. So, you can, you can understand better that this poem deals with a donkey which is given a human name Nicholas Nye. This will understand why this name is given to it and why uh, did the poet write about a donkey. We, will, we shall see everything about it in this video. Let us proceed further but before this I would request you all to subscribe my channel, like my videos and if possible comment even because comment gives courage to the creator those who make videos okay now let us first understand about the poet not only we can understand about the work which he had uh, created walter de la mare's full name is walter john de la mare as you all can see walter john de la mare and we all know very well that he is a novelist a poet and a short story writer especially for children especially for children just here to keep in mind now this is a very less detail about his life like he was born in 1873 uh, in london he got his education from saint paul's cathedral school and he died and buried in the same place saint paul's cathedral and his first work his first work was songs of childhood after that he wrote many other works after that he created many other works like Listener, one of the most famous work of this poet most famous and very interesting poem apart from that Seaton's aunt all hall and many other things here he received he received awards like james tate black memorial prize for fiction and the other that is Karnig Medal for British Children's Book and Karnig Medal, Karnig Medal is a very famous British award which the writers get. So, and unfortunately, he died in the year 1956 in the same place in London where he was born and in the same place where he used to study, he used to go for his education, where he had passed his education, I mean, sir, where he had passed his childhood, there he was buried. So this is in this is in very short about his life story. I believe you all have understood. Let us proceed further and know more about it. Let us understand about the rhyming scheme of the poem. What is this? As uh, we can see here that in this uh, poem there are I already uh, I have already told you that there are six stanzas in the poem. First stanza, and the second stanzas have four lines, which you call quatrain. Four lines. Okay. And the rhyming scheme of the first sentence, as you can see here, if you take this awake, 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 take the last uh, wake, take, take it as this, this rhyme as A, then A, awake, and by. Both of these last words are not rhyming, so take this as second other word, B, A, B, because it's not rhyming, so I'm taking another alphabet to describe it. Then awake, by, share. Share is not rhyming with any of it, but take it as C. A, B, C, because uh, if it doesn't rhyme, so we take another alphabet to symbolize it. So A is not rhyming with B, B is not rhyming with C, C is not rhyming with any of it. Let us see, go to the uh, word Nai. So I can see here that this by is rhyming with Nai. So since both these uh, words are rhyming, so we take it again B. Same sound is coming out. So, I take this at B. So, the rhyming scheme here becomes A, B, C, B. A, B, C, B. And the second stanza, it will go same. But I have taken here another alphabet. So, I have taken here D, E, F, E. Okay. So, the first two stanzas, the, in the first two stanzas, in the first stanza, the rhyming scheme A, B, C, B. And in the second stanza, it is D, E, F, E. So, this is what about first two stanzas. Now, other four stanzas, all those other four stanzas it contains eight lines other all four stanzas like I, one of stanza i have taken here this one okay this is it is of eight lines okay so in eight lines 
what happens here the rhyming scheme of the first and two stanza joined together become the rhyming scheme of the other four lines for example if you see that's why i used here the rhyming scheme here is the is the same as the first two stanzas but in a continuous fashion like a b c b d e f e how imagine gray gray take the first alphabet a for gray done gray and old this wasn't rhyming so i'm taking for it b again here is not rhyming with any of this i take here c but old and fold both are rhyming so i have taken here b a b c b now a spike is not rhyming with any of these words so i take any of these words so i take here it as d since i since c is already taken d a spike and psi is not rhyming so i take here e in fact psi is not rhyming with any of it a b c not rhyming with any of the words so after that a spike or psi and said not rhyming with anything so i take i take here f a new alphabet because it's not rhyming but here is spike Psi and Nai, these two words are rhyming, so I again take here E. This is how it become A, B, C, B, D, E, F, E. So this is what, this is how we take out the rhyming scheme of our form. Okay, and this one A, B, C, B, D, E, F, E will be same for all the other four stanzas. If you see, you find like this. You can put any other alphabet, but you will find that second and the fourth line, line rhymes and here you see here like sixth and the eighth line rhymes. Okay, second and fourth, sixth and eighth. So keep this thing in mind. This is how we take out the rhyming scale. I hope you have understood. Now proceed further. These are the literary terms which we get in this form. Now, so similarly, we know very well we used to uh, compare one object to another in the poem or in liter literary work. So here and we use two words like as or like to understand or to compare something with other. If we find one object is compared to another because of the characteristics and as or like these two words are used in your film so we can understand that it is simile. In this poem simile is used only in one line that is in the second last line of the last stanza where the poet has said would brood like as you can see like a ghost and as steel as a ghost so here the simile is used okay means nicholas nye means that donkey is compared to a ghost and since it is standing still so that activity that action of Nicholas nye is compared to a ghost that's why this is used other thing other you can read here as, as you can see you can stop the video read this thing what expression i have given and you will be able to understand it's the same thing i explained here now next is alliteration in what is the meaning of alliteration alliteration means repetition in two or more nearby words of initial consonant sound means we see the initial alphabets whether those alphabets sound same in one line not in the whole uh, poem we find no in particular line we see whether the same sounding alphabets or same sounding uh, more than one alphabet will be also there same sounding see how lame of a leg and old so here what happens you see this lame la and this leg la the sound of these two L is similar so we can point out that the alliteration is used here now next he had seen since now see seen since sir seen seen since the sound is same the sound is same sir so here we have sir means s sound similar again you see here break and bray break br and bray br sound is same break bray sound is same so we here we get alliteration in this br so we have alliteration in the poem we have simile in the poem we have also rhyming scheme in the poem okay i hope you are understanding what i mean to explain let us see further we also have here repetition what is repetition repetition means word or words or phrases same same words same uh, uh, particular word or particular 
uh, phrases we find again and again in the uh, form or in literary works. So and this is done for the sake of emphasis that the poet wants the reader to understand the importance of the line and he wants the reader to focus there so because there are some hidden meaning inside it maybe but here we have only one word or the, only the name only the name of the donkey that is Nicholas Nye this Nicholas Nye you will find that it is repeated in all the stanzas except the first one except the first one but in all the other five stanzas this Nicholas Nye is repeated again and again. It is done here basically to show that the title of the poem is appropriate because the title is Nicholas Nye. It is done only for the sake of proving that this poem based on Nicholas Nye. That's why this word Nicholas Nye is used again and again in all the stanzas of the poem. Next we have personification. Personification means that is uh, human quality is given, human quality is given to animal or maybe to non-living things that's called personality and this is only done for the sake of uh, providing emotion same emotion to the non-living thing or to the animal so that when the reader would read that piece of work maybe the prose or maybe the poetry the reader would get the same emotion as we used to feel for human beings okay like here we have uh, you see that for Nicholas Nye certain words are used for example like lame of leg so we, when we read this lame of leg we feel pain that the, that, that Nicholas Nye must be having injuries must be having injuries or sigh sigh is a word we basically use for human then we feel sad and then we express our sadness similarly hearty in hell this word we use for human being who is very much energetic then smile I smile and then we don't see the word we don't we don't word we cannot use for animal then uh, animal become widow okay. so these are the word these are used for Nicholas Nye purposely so that the reader would so that it would generate the emotion in the heart and the mind of reader toward the donkey okay and it's, and also toward the poet or the narrator who has described the poem okay so these are all there are four literary terms used or you can say figure of a speech as we have seen similarly we have seen alliteration repetition and personification while describing the poem I will definitely show you where these things are used okay now let us proceed to an art form so here we can see that the poet has used the word they begin with the word thistle darnel dock grew there it means that he is a um, donkey or and also the poet both of them are at a particular place where he can see all these plants and bushes there thistle thistle i have explained here see this uh, this part is the explanation this whole part is the explanation here so uh, what happened here thistle uh, as it is mentioned here a purple color flower with thorny leaves okay purple color flowers with thorny leaves okay as you can understand seeing the picture the next dunnel dunnel is also a type of grass found in europe grass and then dock what is dock dock is a plant with green or red flowers and broad leaves so you can better understand that the poet must be at such a place which is covered with nature or maybe he is on the lap of nature now, there breathe there and a bush he could see this uh, flower or this grass uh, at a particular place and he is there also to see a bush bush of what in a corner in a corner there's a bush of may 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 is also a name of a flower a hawthorn flower this is a hawthorn flower as you can see here so may is also a name of flower but may is even a name of a month but here may means a flower means a month of may when hawthorn flower or this or this plants they all these plants grow so may has ambiguity ambiguity means it has two meanings so here we can see in the meaning of may it it can be a hawthorn flower and simultaneously the poet means the bloom in the month of May. The bloom 
do you understand you know the meaning of bloom that is when the when flowers bloom okay and then they would produce uh what called the fruits and maybe the food or maybe different uh product of the plants it would grow so that's why this word may is used but basically the prime meaning of may is here the horse and flower on the orchard wall I used to spell out. Now we have come to know that this is this place where he could see thistle, darnel, talk, may. This is a place. This is a this is an orchard. And you know what the meaning of orchard means. Orchard means uh, a garden, a garden of fruits or different plants which grow there. Okay, on the orchard wall, what he does, he sprawls, means he lie there. With his hands and feet stretched, he lies there every day. This is his activity. In the blazing heat of the sun means this. These words, this word suggests that this is the month of summer. Thistle, darnel, dock, and may. These flower they grow, they bloom in summer season. And the words used it, blazing heat. So it means that it is the month of summer and. He could sit and the poet or maybe the narrator is lying under a tree so that the heat of the sun would not affect him. So till here I think it is very clear. Uh, Until now Nicholas and I is not introduced. He is taking us uh, on the lap of the nature so that we may also understand and, and enjoy that view which the poet wants us to see. Okay. Now, now let's see. Take in the stanza. Half asleep and half awake. The poet is not sleeping at all. He is there to enjoy the nature. I think he is feeling relaxed. Though he said it's a blazing heat of the sun. Intensive. Since he is lying on the wall of what? Of the orchard. An orchard means a place of trees. And trees means the place must be cool. So he feels relaxed there. That's why he said half asleep, half awake. Well, the birds went teetering by. But still now, before this, he hasn't uh, used a word, of, uh, he hasn't used any word of sound. But first time here, the birds went teetering by. So, one sound is introduced here, the sound of the birds. He could hear the sound of the birds, otherwise he, he has not explained or written or other sound which he could hear at the time. Uh, that, that is the, uh, during the daytime. So, while well, the birds went twittering by, and nobody there, my loan to share. He said, he said, the poet said that, that he was, he is alone there. He is alone there. Birds, they're busy in twittering and finding their food. But he is alone there, lying, half asleep, half awake, with a sleep. Nobody is there. He's alone. But, Nicholas lie. Now, the name has come. Nicholas Lamb. One, one person or one identity, who the identity could be. But the poet said he is not alone. There is someone. But by the name we can understand, Nicholas Nye may be some human being. Let us see who this Nicholas Nye is. Let us see the stanza. Nicholas Nye was lean and gray. The meaning of word lean is slim or skinny. Slim means, slim means who is uh, Thin because of lack of food or maybe of poor health. That's why the word slim. This slim doesn't mean that you maintain yourself. No, this slim means that's why the word skinny is also used because of uh, poor health. This Nicholas Nye become lean and gray. Okay, so now gray, G R E Y. It must be G R E Y. So gray means here gray word is associated with miseries and old age. Whoever this Nicholas Nye is. This Nicholas Knight does not have good health. Lame of leg and oh, that's why another the word the word old has come. Lame of leg means lame of leg means it must have injuries in one of its leg. Okay. And old. So we have come to know the word grey got here associated. Grey old. Okay now. More than a score of donkey's ears. Now the word donkey has appeared. I mean, this Nicholas Nye is a donkey. Okay, so the poet is not alone. The poet here has his companion that is a donkey. Okay, and it has 
when it has achieved 20 years of age. A score means 20. Okay, I wrote here the meaning. A score means 20. It has achieved 20 years of age. More than the 20 years of donkey's year he had been since he was formed. And the, the poet means to say, since he was fold, the word fold, actually the word it, the word fold has come in the word fold, f o a l, and this word means young one. This word means young one of animal, fold. Okay, the baby, baby of animal, basically of horse or donkey. This baby, their baby is called fold. Okay, from there the word fold form means uh, verb. So here, this fold means birth. This word fold, F-O-A-L-E-D, fold means birth. Okay, so he said that since his birth, it means, uh, the poet means to say, this Nicholas Nye is known to the people who live nearby. That's why this word, he was fold is used. When people know Nicholas Nye, that people must have seen Nicholas Nye when uh, Nicholas Nye was born. People must have seen. That's why it is the word is used since he, he had been since he was told. So 20 years he had achieved. He munched the thistle, purple and spines. So the activity which this Nicholas Nye is doing, okay, was munching, he was chewing that, that thistle, the word we never use, this thistle plant, he was chewing. And his spike way because the meaning you have already seen. Would sometimes stop and sigh. Okay, it must be the word uh, here, it must be stop, okay, stop, not a stoop, it must be stop, the word must be stop, not a stoop, it's sometimes a stop and sigh, munching, while munching, the donkey, means that was munching, continuously chewing, it stop, it stop this activity of chewing, and then it sigh, sigh means an expression of fatigue, frustration, or grief, fatigue means tiredness, so, and what how do we sigh when we take a long deep breath like oh we do these things when we do these things when we feel pain when we feel grief or sadness then we do this kind of uh, uh produce this kind of expression sigh okay so this donkey this stops while munching while drinking and it sighs and turns his head okay as if he had Say, turn the head means while 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 munching, though this donkey is very lazy. While munching, it turns its head here and there. Okay, and then it seems that he means to say how poor this Nicholas Nye is. Means how pathetic the condition of this animal. How bad the condition of this animal. Means he is talking about himself. That how poor condition I am in, Nicholas Nye. Two words suggest here. Well, like the poet said here, he sighs. Okay, his size, okay, and shows his grief and it turns his head in such a gesture that gesture produces or uh, it explains us that he means to say or he wants us to understand that uh, he himself thinks that he is a poor creature or he is in a very bad condition. Do you think that donkey would think about itself all this thing that its condition is very poor or it would sign? No. This, these expression are all in the mind of the poet. Actually, he is expressing his uh, difficulties, his grief in terms of donkey. Remember this thing, okay? Poets, basically poets, they take help of different object of nature to express themselves. This is what here, this Walter Taylor May or the narrator, whoever is describing this poem is trying to express. Okay, their grief, their loneliness in terms of this Nicholas Nye. Another stanza. Alone with his shadow. Nicholas Nye is there alone. He does not have any company. No wife, no children. Alone. He would draws in the meter. Draws is standing. He was drawing. Like in the poet, he's lying on the wall of the orchard and he half asleep half awake it means he is chosen same thing here yeah, this donkey is doing he is standing he is munching and at the same time chosen okay in the middle the word middle is used middle means field that field where you can see 
the field is covered with plants that's called major and it especially occurred in the month of summer it means in during summer season lazily swinging his tail okay the donkey he is alone he has no company so with whom would he play with whom would he talk so very lazily swinging his tail very lazily passing his time at break of day he used to break this is this is his regular habit this is his regular habit that at break of day means break of day means evening at evening what it does it used to bray okay it used to bray at break of day it used to bray no not much too hearty in hell when it brays the bray the sound of the donkey would suggest you that this donkey is not much hearty in hell hearty in hell means robust health means good health sound health this donkey does not have good health okay and you can see here in hell and hearty also we have alliteration but a wonderful gumption was under his skin gumption means bravery he said and i could see bravery under his skin you can see here he said wonderful gumption how could he see bravery under his skin he means to explain us that the donkey is brave in what term that he is alone he has no companion but he has no grudge he bears it without any complaint and this is a thing of bravery and a clean calm again you see clean and calm this word uh, has repetition of skr so there is alliteration and a clean calm light in his eyes you could see that a uh, light of satisfaction in his eyes clean calm light means no hurriness no complaint of light calm in his eyes okay light, a light of satisfaction it means and once in a while what happened he would smile a smile means he would give a smile here one word he would smile this is a verb and this is a noun he would smile a smile it means he would produce a kind of a smile would make well a smile so when once in a while he would smile and seeing his smile you would understand that he wants to explain us that this is Nicholas Knight who can bear all the trouble of life alone that's what he meant to say so he will smile in the, the smile is a sarcastic smile he means to explain us that whatever the problem in life or difficulties you must smile fifth stanza seem to be smiling at me the poet says that sometime um, Nicholas Nye smiles, he said, seems to be smiling at me. The poet, when uh, he is lying on that uh, wall of the orchard, he views Nicholas Nye, his activities. So when Nicholas Nye uh, sometime turns his face toward uh, the poet, the poet sees that Nicholas Nye is smiling. So he said, seem to be smiling at me. This is what the poet is assuming. Definitely, Nicholas Knight not, not, not smiling at him. This is what the poet is assuming. Okay, he would from his bush in the corner of May. Again, you see bush in the corner of May. This same line, this, all these words are used in the first stanza, second line. And in the second and the first stanza, you can see. So this is also an example of repetition. So here I said from that same corner where he is standing and eating thistle that and munching thistle or the maybe the other or maybe the grass and other things so from that same corner nicholas nye what he what what he is doing he smiles he smiles and the poet thinks that he is smiling at and in this and in this stanza the poet has summed up the poor condition of nicholas nye what but what is important here in this poor condition even in this poor condition even Nicholas Nye is smiling what is the poor condition see here bony and ownerless it means bony means lack of health poor health because of that it's become skinny ownerless no one is there to care for him donkey has no owner means no one is there to take care of him widowed no life partner or if he 
uh, must be having that that female she died and he uh, does not have any children with him we don't won won means in a rest poor condition completely shattered completely in a bad condition nobly need nobly need means where what happened here uh, as you can see the meaning is given knees bend inward and become mischief in when you must have seen your grandmother or grandfather if you would have noticed what happens here that their knees get inside okay it get inside and part of the um, what called the leg it become mischief and lonely and again the word grace used here so you can understand here that he is bony ownerless widowed worn nobly need lonely gray he is encircled by the problems of life and it seems that he has reached to his end the life which he is leaving is about to be end so here you can say nobly need here we have mm, but in this nobly so definitely we have again here the alliteration okay so this is how you find alliteration like in the first line seem and a smile seem smile so there is also a sound and there is also an alliteration and over the grass would seem to pass means the whole day the whole day this nicholas nai he would munch the grass or hazel or tarnel or dog or may other flowers okay and the whole day he passed like this he passes like this beneath neath means beneath the deep blue sky okay above there is deep blue sky and below this poet and this nicholas nai both of them are there they're not talking to each other but they have the same plight same condition the poet is also alone the donkey is too so both of them share the same condition that's why the poet can understand the problem of donkey so well because he is also suffering the same problem okay now sometime much better than words between me and nicholas man this line means that sometime the without talking without this conversation even this um the the poet and nicholas nai share the same thoughts that's why he used the, this word that uh, sometimes much better than words between me and nicholas nai they don't have to talk but the condition is same lean old gray poor condition okay and this what we communicate when when sometime what happens he is lying there and nicholas nicholas nai while munching he looks at that man I means at the poet and smiles so this is a great communication between this two creature or you can say this two uh, personalities now let us proceed towards the last stanza in the last stanza the poet has summed up the poem and see how he had done but dusk would come and the apple dies dusk means evening so the word wood is used it means daily approach it's the daily activities uh, it happens regularly so uh, he's not speaking about a one particular day he's speaking about uh, his habits he used to uh, lie every day on the orchard wall and he used to see that uh, um donkey he said so wood come so evening approaches and he said that in the apple boughs it means that orchard must be of apple orchard apple garden okay that's why he is the word apple boughs then the green of glow warm shines the uh, the evening has approached literally when the darkness has appeared so much that he the poet would be able to see the green light of the glow warm of the beetles the green light of the glow warm okay he is able to see that it means that uh, the night has approached a lot the darkness has covered the place so that is why he is able to see the birds in nest already already the birds they have reached in their nest they are already in their nest would crouch to rest crouch means bend down so when they bend down to rest to take rest so that it means that the birds are not are uh, entering into their nest no they are already in their nest and they are taking rest there and home i would trudge to my trudge means long and tiring walk as you can see here a long and tiring walk this is called trudge 
So he, he, he does not want to go back home, but he has to do since the night has approached. He has to take shelter. That's why. You say, so home I would drudge to mine. I have to go back my home, which I, which I don't want to, but I have to. No. And there in the moonlight, dark dew. So moonlight, night has approached completely. Moonlight has approached. Okay, dark the dew. Though there is moonlight, but it's still, it's still the environment is dark. The atmosphere is dark. Why? Because of the dew. Okay, the dew has what it has done. It has, it has, it is acting as an opaque object so that it, uh, it stops the light. It stops the light to uh, come on the ground and it stops the light to reflect anything so that people will see. So, because of this dew, the environment is completely dark. Otherwise, there is moonlight, but the problem is the dew, which is acting here as an opaque. Asking not wherefore or why. Wherefore also means what, what is the reason. Asking not what is the reason or why would brood like a ghost. No one is there to ask uh, this uh, donkey. When birds, they take shelter, glow worms come. Okay, glow worms, they all come. The poet, he marches toward his house at this time even. Nicholas Knight is still there. He's standing like a ghost. If you see from, from a distance, you, will, you, you, you would see that there is someone standing. You get afraid. You get afraid seeing it. That's why the word is used ghost. Or even uh, ghost has another meaning that the appearance is there, but you won't be able to see anything. Okay? It means Nicholas Knight is there. Nobody will notice. The two meaning, two meaning can be used here. As the ghost means, he is there, but nobody could notice. Nobody could understand the importance of this Nicholas Knight. Or the other meaning is there. He is standing in a corner like a ghost. Okay? And then, as still as the ghost, he stands there, quite silently, without movement. So the poet has compared him to a ghost. Non-living ghost. If you see, always stand in the same place. Similarly, he is standing there like a ghost. So, old Nicholas Nye. So here, this full form, in this full form, the poet has described a donkey. But do you think, do you think the poet has uh, literally described a donkey? No. The poet has actually described his condition, his poor condition, his uh, grief he has taken out with the help of this animal. This donkey has become his mouthpiece with the help of which he tried to explain us his condition. He is also alone, he is old, he is lean, he is in a poor plight or in a poor condition. The poet uh, wants us to understand this. So this is how we have finished and I believe you all have understood it well. Try to find out alliteration. Simile is only in this line. Repetition, I showed you there are only the repetition of this name Nicholas Nye and one line that I showed you already which we have that is bush in the corner of May. Okay. Apart from that rhyming scheme we have seen in all the standards is quite similar. Only alliteration you can get in different places. Okay, I hope you have understood. If you have any queries related to this, you can ask me question and answer. You would get in the description box. Open it and you will get a PDF there of question and answer and also of this uh, whole matter from where I have taught you. Okay, I believe this is enough for today and you can understand, read this instruction or you can follow me in different platform also. You can message me there, you can comment, you can make me understand how you feel and what more you want me to do.